If you're looking for inspirational videos on how to make the best stained glass, tutorials, tips and tricks on some cool ideas, you've come to the right place. Hello and welcome to my studio. Today I thought I would do a video on how to begin traditional glass painting. Um, I've had a lot of feedback on the last videos that I've made showing some of the more um, experimental ways to work with glass and the experimental ways to work with pens in particular. And I should, there should be a link to that video showing you uh, that. But this, this video here today is really about um, traditional glass painting techniques. And I wanted to set up a video or a series of videos on how to work in the traditional stained glass method. So um, today's video is going to be about the tools of the trade, the essential pieces of kit that you're going to need in order to start your glass painting journey. Um, it, it's not too expensive to buy two or three interesting brushes, useful brushes that are going to last you well. If you maintain them and look after them, they will last you for years. And you can build up and experiment and develop the brushes that you use over a period of time. But it always starts any journey with the first step. And the first step is buying two or three good quality brushes, knowing what they're called, knowing what their function is, knowing how to work with them and knowing how to get the best out of those brushes is really good. I'll touch a little bit on the pigments that I use, but again, I won't go into too much detail because that will be for later videos, along with painting techniques that you might want to use. Again, will be later in the series of videos that I'm planning to make on traditional glass painting. But today is the start of that journey. So let's show you the brushes and tools that you're gonna to need to get up and running making traditional stained glass painting. So, um, the first thing that you'll need to get is a palette. Um, I use glass palettes. This one has been sandblasted slightly to create an abrasive surface. It's six millimeter thick clear glass and I put little stoppers on the bottom just to lift the glass off the surface of the light table. Sometimes light tables can get quite hot and that's transferred to the glass palette. So it reduces the amount of heat that gets transferred by simply putting the glass palette on a little stoppers, a set of stoppers that you can get at local hardware stores. Palette knife. Um, I tend to use these long thin palette knives, which are really helpful and useful for uh, manipulating the paint into the right shape. And it's a useful uh, little tool. You can pick them up really easily. All of the items that I'm showing you here, I'm going to leave links in the description below. This is a glass molar. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy a glass molar straight away, but it is one of the alternative methods to a palette knife, which you can use for mixing paint. It's a little bit like a mortise and pestle. Or pestle. And you can grind the pigment. Uh, I prefer using a palette knife because, as I said earlier, you can manipulate the paint and scrape the paint around. It's a lot easier to work with. So you'll also need some paints. Um, I tend to use Roish paints, which are an American paint. Um, go for something like a Bister Brown in a small quantity. These are large quantities that I'm showing you just now um, because I use a lot of paint in my work, but you can buy small sachets. Buy a tracing paint as well, which is a much denser pigment and it's used for the line work rather than the tracing work. You'll also need a bridge. Now these are easy to make yourself in soft wood, um, just a length of wood and glue a couple of other small lengths of wood underneath with some stoppers. And that is used to uh, elevate your hand above the surface of the paint so that you don't accidentally smudge the paint. It also has the added advantage of reducing any handshake or tremor. We all have tremors to a larger or lesser extent. It's also very helpful for doing straight lines. You can use it as a bridge ruler like this to create straight line effects. Useful, very useful piece of kit. You'll also need uh, a couple of bowls just for clear water. I just normally use tap water. Uh, we live in the UK and the tap water is relatively fine. It's not too treated. You will also need some gum arabic. You can use liquid gum arabic like this, or you can use a powder version. Both are readily available. And again, I will leave information on how to obtain 
all of these items online. They're easily accessible. So moving on to brushes, uh, I would suggest that we think about buying a couple of rigger brushes. Now rigger brushes are called rigger brushes apparently because they were commonly used to paint the rigging on marine paintings. The long hair absorbs any handshakes and limits the wobbles and the mark making which is really really useful. Great for detailed work and also for line work. It come, they come as you can see here in a variety of sizes. Again links in the description below to suppliers for these rigger brushes. I would generally suggest that you don't go for too thick a rigger brush to start with. Go for a middle size rigger brush, uh, something like this, which uh, is a very useful size for detailed work. Um, you can always use larger brushes for anything that's larger that you need to detail. Um, the second set of brushes I would think that you should have are the hake brushes. These are applicator brushes for applying uh, large water washes to the surface of glass in order to create different pigments. They come in a variety of sizes as you can see and a variety of hair types. So you've got squirrel, you've got uh, hog hair, you've got artificial uh, hair, you've even got camel hair over on the right there. But generally I would assume that you'd want a relatively small hake brush or applicator brush to start with. You can always buy more brushes later, but these are very useful for applying thin washes to the surface of the glass before applying any texture. Now, again, a very important part of the texture making process is a badger brush. I would definitely invest in a badger brush. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, large and small. Um, they, I think they're available in two inches, three inches, four inches and six inch widths. Um, and it's a softening, blending brush. It's really, really useful because it's such a soft bristle brush that it doesn't really leave any marks and you can actually get almost like an airbrush effect on the surface of the glass. I'll go into the details of actually how we work with these brushes in later videos but essentially um, this two inch badger brush is the one that I would recommend that you go for just now. Essentially it's just a case of showing you the brushes that I would recommend. Uh, we'll go into the details of how to use them in later videos. So you'll also require some scrub brushes. This great big brush here is called an English stippler probably don't need to buy one this large to start with but scrub brushes are available in a variety of sizes again usually hog hair because the bristles need to be relatively strong and robust and these are used to texturize and create little pinpricks in the surface of the glass letting light through between uh, the pigment and the glass really useful brushes I would again consider buying a couple of scrub brushes to start with. Don't forget a little uh, diffuser, a water diffuser. It's very useful for creating effects. It's also very useful for putting water into the pigment in a moderated and um, controlled way. Now you may have noticed the light table in the opening shots of this particular video. I would suggest that you consider buying a small light table to start with. They're readily available on Amazon. Again, links in the description below. This is an A3 size one. And uh, they are really, really useful because they don't uh, emanate much heat. So your, uh, your paint doesn't tend to dry out. They are low voltage. Um, you just plug them into your socket and away you go. There's different settings, low, medium and high, and it's a really useful piece of kit. Again, not particularly expensive and as well as, you know, using natural daylight, you can use artificial light from these um, LED backlight screens, which are tremendous. They're really, they're really uh, worth investing in. So essentially these are the key pieces of equipment and tools that you'll need in order to begin your journey in learning to paint on glass. There are lots of other things to cover, but this is a general overview of some of the things that you should perhaps consider buying in order to set up your workstation for painting on glass. I'll cover in other videos, the texture, the application of paint, all of the other uh, 
elements that go to making paint work on glass. Well, just a little tip here. Um, if you're using gum arabic, start you with using a very small amount like this. Just a little tap of gum arabic is all you need. You can't take away gum arabic if you've put too much in, but you can always add more gum arabic if you need to. So just a small bit of gum arabic to start with. But I will go into a lot more detail about paint, treatment of paint and the use of paint in future videos. So essentially, we're up and running, we've got our tools, and we're ready to rock and roll. So there we have it. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you have now got a list of tools and equipment that will help you set up your own paint station. All of the items listed in today's video are in the description below. The one thing I haven't mentioned, of course, today is kilns. You need a kiln in order to fire your pigment. I'm presuming you've either got your own kiln or you have access to a kiln. There are secondhand kilns available on eBay from ceramicists and potters, etc. So that's a great way to start. So please leave comments, leave remarks and suggestions for future videos. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And I'll see you in the next one.